way this is a one way this is a two way keynote so the past 24 hours has seen activity that i have not seen in an incredibly long time now not to sound old and wise because i'm just young and smart but seeming old and wise is critical if you are under 50. <laughs> I laugh because most of you hopefully are around 23, 24. Being old and wise while you're young, that's what I did when I was super young. So if you're not trying to do that, you will be literal toast. And I'm not talking about perfectly toasted toast that they just hand you at the Four Seasons, where if you're not happy with your toast, they retoast it until you're happy. And I don't know how they heat transfer the bread and the moisture to be, oh, it's just so perfect. It's just so perfect. You will be toast, bad toast, if you don't hear and try to compress the genius things. Because I've seen also the clubhouse dynamic before. And the clubhouse dynamic is this. There's this new club, okay? And all the cool kids are going. And the cool kids are interacting with us loser kids. Well, not us. You, you loser kids. But then I sound bad. So it's us loser kids, but I'm not. I, okay. So coolness, okay? Uh, it's cool. Clubhouse is cool. Why is Clubhouse cool? Because it's all these knowledge drums. In the past 24 hours, there has not been this much activity in the financial markets, this much activity in the world, okay? There hasn't been this much activity, okay, in the world. And, and people, they're not ready. So I see how much time you guys spend on Clubhouse. And that's not, it's good, but you have to crack a book. You have to put pen to paper. If you're just listening to an author, Larry Chang, an author, Guy Kawasaki, an author, Naval Ravikant, as told to Eric Jorgensen, the state that we're in right now, which is why it's so brain exploding, is you could be a note taker like Eric Jorgensen, you can just write down what Naval said and you get your own bestseller. Like that's the state that we're in where douchebags like myself who are super rich and super popular and super famous, we don't have time to tweet. I always have time to tweet because it's important to the most important reader in the world. Guess who that reader is? Konya, I'm going to help you be rich. I'm going to take you to the next level if you can focus on details and write stuff down. But honestly, okay, after you get to $600,000 or you overshoot your goal and you get to $1.6 million or you overshoot that goal and become the senator to Sweden, become the ambassador. That's how American I am. I think there's senators in Sweden. If you become the Swedish ambassador named Kenny Howery, my friend who ran external APIs. And keep me on point here because that's what we're here to talk about. But uh, Konya, okay, when you hug me, I'm gonna be like, who the F are you? Because I will never remember you, okay? I mean, you'll remember me for what I did with you, but no, you're not my most important Twitter reader. In fact, you haven't even read my Twitter, have you? And I'm being, do I have your permission to be honest with you? You have read my Twitter? Okay. You need to favorite it after you read it or else I don't think you've ever read it. So it's read it, hear it, do it, teach it. Hear it, do it. And teach it's, don't do the teach it part because there's kind of a lot of people in Clubhouse that are trying to teach and trying to be the expert when you should be hear it, do it, hear it, do it, hear it, and then do it.
that's the magic of Silicon Valley. That's the magic of Clubhouse. That's why it's so cool in one word, but it spiders off into so many more details of why is is cool. Because with cool stuff, some people do well because of cool stuff and some people drop off. Why are the past 20, thank you for laughing. Why are the past 24 hours so significant? Because it actually dovetails and runs in parallel in specific lockstep with history repeating. Lockstep with Wall Street Bets, where the real world is now the online world because Wall Street Bets, last time I checked, decentralized hedge fund, but what it is in a way that all y'all can understand versus just me, a giant thinking brain that runs Silicon Valley is Reddit. It's just a bunch of people on Reddit sharing ideas. That's the new decentralized hedge fund. In two words, why the last 24 hours of Clubhouse has been so significant. It's the hive mind. It's the angry mob. It's Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street, now done in a cohesive way. That cohesion, if you wanna write it down, if not, you don't have to write it down, which is the decentralized hedge fund. This is also outsider trading. I am new to all of this. I am an entrepreneur who sits on boards, who takes notes. This is if I'm sitting now on the board of directors of America running an API. In fact, I'm not even running an API. Currently, I am just reading an API. Just outside of 24 hours, a rando dude named Bobby Goodlatte, which I actually have met him a bunch of times. He's just forgotten me. Bob Goodlatte. He used to be a UI designer. He's actually best friends with, or maybe best competitors, frenemies, with my best friend, Jason Patorti. P-U-T-O-R-T-I. They are both designer and residences at Greylock. So Greylock's a venture capital firm and Jason Patorti, Larry Chang, Bob Goodlap. Do you remember how drunk Bobby sounded? He sounded drunk because that's what 80 sticks of money does when you have 180 sticks that uh, $180 million. When you get $180 million and it takes you nine years, maybe 11 years, I mean, that's a lot of work, okay? And you're barely clearing 10 mil a year. In fact, you're clearing less than 10 because of taxes. And then it's just, I mean, it's a grind. It's a literal grind, like NBA players, okay? That's a grind. Like Tom Brady's only making 25. He didn't even make the all pro bowl. So when you make 80 sticks, chipping in 150 grand back on Coinbase, because, you know, early investor, I mean, he probably just rolled the dice on like 50 grand by kissing specific butt. Do you remember whose butt he kissed? Ben remembers. Ben, you want to jump up here? Ben remembers because Ben followed up. Hear it? Do something about it. Hear it? Do something about it. Ben remembers. Ben remembers, and I know Ben remembers because Ben wrote it down on Twitter, where he said, at Gary Tan, at Larry Chang, mentioned you in a positive light. And the reason for that significant is the fact that there was follow-up. Question for the room, and I won't. Question for the room. When was the last time you followed up? Question for the room. When was the last time you followed up? And I'm not going to call on people because I'm going to guess that no one's followed up on any of it. And the reason Konya is at the front of the room is he sent a text, okay? Like, as far as percentage of Larry Chang execution, it's like one Satoshi out of 21 million. That's the ratio. Maybe seven, maybe 7,000 Satoshi out of 21 million. Konya, do you remember when I closed 
Bobby or Bobby tried to close me to try to give me a VC job for $500,000. Just yeah. What else would you say about what you heard? Or is that insignificant that Clubhouse just drops 500K job offers all day long? You're treating it, you're treating it like, hey, this two hot girls bought Larry a slushie at the mall and then offered to do a three-way. I mean, that common and banal and commonplace like it's like that's how you stated it like it was just Monday night for a Larry Chang I mean that's $500,000 in job offer and he offered principal he offered associate and then what did I say to try to tease him even more when he was begging and selling hard the job what did I say Now that was before. So it's execution while a person's talking. It's, it's doing something. It's organizing a dinner in Bobby's building. Do you see the, the do you see now or, okay, so what about the $500,000 VC job offer? Go. I didn't hear you. You said you make that sound like a question. Okay, so rego for people that are in the room that didn't hear. So 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 rego. Because this isn't oh, why is Larry Chang so great, okay? Because if I weren't recording this, I would be great the 364 days and the other 23 and a half hours, right? Why am I recording this for you? Repeat. How quickly did I close Bobby on that $500,000 VC job? How quickly? No, no, no. It was about two hours of listening, right? Because we were in that room how long? Didn't take 10 minutes. And this is why people don't succeed is because people don't get the details. These are all the details from behind the curtain. What's so viscerally, emotionally hard is that there is no curtain. Poor people just think, oh, you just don't want to pick me for your for your fancy baseball team just because I'm Chinese and I'm too tall to play shortstop. Oh, you're a tall Chinese person prejudice. No, I need you. This is my coach speaking. No, I need you to practice baseball versus just being the best baseball player that you and I have ever seen. Okay. A lot of times you don't even know how many outs there are because you're freaking posing for selfies with hot girls that are like throwing bras at you. Like I need focus. I'd rather have a bad shortstop who's focused than a good pretty one. Why am I out ironing out in excruciating detail these things? Why? You could have gotten that $500,000 job offer from Bobby. Do you see how I was just a voice on the phone? I had at the time, like, how many followers did I have? I exploded. How many followers? I even took down my bio. Huh. How many, how many followers did I have with Bobby in that dumb room?
A hundred million? A million? Not very many followers, right? In fact, we might be neck and neck on followers. I know, it's funny. The reason that that's funny is that it doesn't matter how many followers you have on Instagram or Twitter. It just matters that you read a couple external API tweets. Currently, do you remember Juka? Remember what we sold? We sold a rock, right? And I remember when I was on mute in the room, you said, Larry started talking about sales and then the whole room cleared. Do you remember saying that? Now, how bad am I making you feel and why am I making you feel bad by calling you out in a way that the rest of the room is actually scared because they're gonna be like, well, are you gonna call me out? Why did I not call you out in street lingo of low socioeconomic, social and economic? Which is funny because I said a double entendre twice to stress That's the sexy word. The important word is socioeconomic. Low social, low economic to high social, which you said networking, and then high economic, which you have been not doing. Socioeconomic. So finish, I interrupted you. Why am I citing and sourcing that specific thing that you said? When Larry started talking about sales and selling, the room cleared. No, most people would rather gossip about doing the work versus doing the work. And you had an opportunity to be the person that Bobby offers $500,000 to, but you went back to old behaviors. When the rooms, yeah, right? Thank you for recognizing and you're welcome for the, the insight into what you need to do to get to, I mean, 500K is right next door to 600K, right? It's right next door. I would even say it's five floors down at 1435 Brickle. supposed to laugh at the callback to the address that Bobby offered, which you just carelessly cast aside because Clubhouse is just so cool that you'd rather have a cool offer than be real. Yeah, you actually do, which is why you're up here, because you will go from Zero to what? Oh, good. This is the 15th time I've asked you and you've aced times 11 through 16. Whereas times zero through 10 plus didn't. And do you see how that's progress for you? And the reason that the past 24 hours inside of Clubhouse has been so significant is the fact that you can do multiple tracks where everyone thinks I went off the path. This is the path, which is using Clubhouse to get to your midterm, short-term goal. If you just want to meet famous people, you can do that. If you want to hear genius gossip that you will temporarily remember and then regurgitate, which specifically is this, is the nuggets. Grab a pen. Maybe you don't want to do an external API. Maybe you don't want to get something that's a commercially viable success. A lot of people don't. And if you have questions about an external API, I think it is the most significant thing, both before coming to Clubhouse, during Clubhouse, and then after Clubhouse. Because it isn't just a formula for success, it's success broken down into details. Short sales, naked sales, Wall Street bets. A dude on Reddit, it's always a dude sitting quietly in a room 
not talking to anybody, which is why it's so critical to read, okay? There's this book, it's called The Hour Between Dog and Wolf. And the reason that Tom Brady, Elon Musk, and Larry Chang are successful is the fact that it's all written out on page 215, which is how to run your brain. Be scared that I actually can memorize that, that page. I mean, I think it's the hour between dog and wolf. I, I think it's page 215. Let me see, let me see. In fact, yeah, I don't know where. I, I, am I scaring you with my ability to uh, recollect exact, exact book and verse? what because I was going to talk about naked sales but I'll remember what I'm going to talk about what were you what do you want me to talk about no no what are you going to ask I do I've been there before. It's Silicon Valley in its golden age. It's Twitter during its golden age. It's whatever at its golden age. This is the golden age of... Because Bobby told you his address and you said you would probably send a thank you card. And guess how many people that Bobby offered, I wanna say 15 times. I was doing a, uh, a count of how many times he mentioned his own address. Yeah, 15. <laughs> he said it that many times and yeah. Well, I did, which is why I rose, right? And that's why these things are useful. That's what most people do, is they literally throw a Hail Mary. Like, they literally throw a Hail Mary before the game starts in a game that they're not even playing. Like, that's literally what you did. Like, do you see how, like, as soon as you see how stuff works? I can't tell you also how many young males, and I didn't do this, but you get your first $600,000 and it actually turns out to be super easy. And then you start literally fucking everything that walks because you got money in your pocket and you wanted to fuck before the money. And now that you've got the money, you're gonna fucking fuck. And I'm like, there are the fucking wagon wheels. And then me and my mentor just look at each other and be like, didn't read chapter seven. Bang, let's get ahead. And that's what people mean by you're getting ahead of yourself. Yeah, Mark. McCormack. Actually, uh, you should have read it already because I mentioned that book during the Bobby call. <laughs> so there's this hilarious, uh, event that happened and it matters because everyone was like did you go to stanford like why are you so fucking famous like you're not special i mean you're just tall and pretty like if you meet me in person i am super tall and super like charismatic and i can be quiet and i can own the room i mean obviously so I'm on a date 
and this girl decides to shit test me. Do you guys know what a shit test is? It's when a girl who's hot treats you poorly to see what you're gonna do. So we're on this San Francisco Giants fundraising event. It's like $2,500 a ticket and it's all access to players. How douchey am I? It's all access to every portion of the field, uh, selfies with, uh, with, your, with your iPhone one or a digital camera. And my arms are super long so I can take selfies. So I've been taking selfies and selfies. So I'm taking this girl, her name was to protect the innocent. We'll just call her Jessica because that was her name. <laughs> I go to the bathroom and I'm a dude peeing, okay? And I drink a lot of water and I pee super fast, wash my hands with soap super fast, okay? I'm back in the spot that we left at because I'm like, freaking wait, freaking here. She's like, okay. I come back and she is flirting, letting this guy f like talk her up. And I'm like, just like a person who doesn't realize that they're getting interrogated, all of life is a test, right? So she's happily talking to this guy, doesn't say, oh, this is my date, okay, to this whale of an event. This is, she doesn't. She just lets me try to cut in and wedge, okay? As if I'm boxing out a seven foot, uh, Mark Gasol, who's probably gonna get the rebound. In fact, I think he was super tall. He was like taller than me, and I gotta now box out, okay? And I'm not a pro athlete, but I'm a semi-pro athlete, but I also win. So I wedge in, and I don't say the beta male thing of, hey, I'm sorry, this is my date. Do you mind leaving? I just stand there and listen, okay? Because that's how powerful listening is, is once I hear what you're saying, I own you. I own you like I bought your book and ran your psych profile and consulted a psychic. That's what listening is. Like you think psychics, like that's how a psychic works or a mentalist, or a good clinician. I listen, and then I ask questions. I seriously said, after he was talking about how great he was, and I said, because he had a big commercial success, uh, big. This is San Francisco. So they treat, at the time, single digit millionaires horribly, okay? Horribly. Like they sniff that you're a single digit millionaire. They treat you like crap. They treat interns better than they treat single digit millionaires. This is back when I was poor. So they treat interns better because interns, they can make a billion dollars, but then lose all of it because they took venture capital, but then they made you $180 million, Bobby. They made you 80 sticks, okay, Bobby. <laughs> So they'll treat losers that are new way better than they treat a like early middle 20s single digit millionaire, especially one that's like got a BSD or BSD energy. If you're new to America, it's big swinging dick. It's, hey, and it used in a sentence, it is, hey, it's rare in Chinese people for big BSD energy. And I'm like, cause I listen, I'm like, what the, what's BSD? That sounds like a compliment. What's BSD? They're like, you know what BSD is. I'm like, no, I don't know what BSD is. Just like the Jerry Rice thing. The DM me, my, my oh. cell phone's my username. Uh, DM me and I'll tell you what BSD is. So I'm trying to box out this dude running game on my date, I am five grand in the hole. I got 2,500 bucks for my ticket and 25 bucks for her ticket. And this breaks all my own rules of the $50 rule. I don't spend $50 inside of the first five dates, but that's how hot 
Jessica was, okay? I'm five grand in. I've broken my own $50 rule. If you want me to expand on that, that's a different clubhouse. $50 date, $50 rule. I am five grand in. So I have something vested to try to close this deal, right? And now I've got significant competition. So what do I do? So what do I do? So what do I do? I say, tell me about why you're so great. Had some commercial success. He said to me these words, which is why I bring the story up. He said, I read the book, Four Steps to the Epiphany. You heard of it? I'm like, no, I haven't heard of it. Like, did you just make that up? But I didn't say that. I said, can you tell me maybe, tell me if this sounds like Larry Chang of 2021 and not just Larry Chang 2006, freshly minted with a engineering degree. Can you tell me one or two things that you learned from Four Steps to the Epiphany? I said that so that way I can remember Four Steps to the Epiphany. And he said, it's all about customer contact. And it's, a, it's, the, it's about customer contact. It's about customer development. You know, in my experience as a lowly single digit millionaire, okay, just at this lowly San Francisco exclusive event, obviously low person on the totem pole, and kind of feeling short standing at six foot four and a half compared to your tall, rock slinging, game playing, running game, obviously on my plus one. Customer development, customer feedback, uh, customer loop. That's what I learned. And I said, hold on a second. I left those two, okay? If, if you meet your uh, soulmate, not that I believe in that, while I'm dating her and, you know, moving the Chinese sausage around here, who am I to get in the way? But you getting in the way of me getting to my next level? No. So, uh, Pac Bell Park, AT&T Park, whatever they nomenclated to be. Now it's Oracle Park, which is weird because Oracle's a Texas company now. Anyway, I went and I dialed up on my sidekick, okay, early adopter. Danger device, 164 University. Thank you for coming into my office and selling me that flip device. Got on my danger sidekick, okay? Flipped it open. I had to get to a place with good reception because Pac Bell Park, like San Francisco actually has horrible reception. So I had to leave those two and I said, I'll be right back. I went to my friend Jeff's website and then I searched, okay, four steps to the epiphany, Amazon. And then I had internet on my phone, which a lot of people didn't have. And I was actually able to buy books live. So that way the book would be waiting for me so that I could read it. I'm telling you these things because this play is doable. Because my friend Jeff's Amazon website, he'll ship you a book super fast. And then you just read another book, how to read fast, called the Evelyn Wood Speed Reading Book Book. And then you read it fast. Then what happened? Three days later, then what happened? So do you guys want to know about what happened with me and Jessica? Or do you want to know what happens after I read that book in two days? In two days? Good job. That was a test. Because everybody wants to go, hey, what happened on the rest of that date? So that's why you're on the platform and why other people haven't yet raised their hand. Hand raising is open. The book came super fast. And by the way, that book, Four Steps to the Epiphany, was available on this publisher called Cafe Press. It was 65 bucks for a paperback. And I balked a little bit, 
not because I didn't have the money, but because that's an exorbitant paperback, exorbitant. But I was 20, I was five grand in. Plus it's a book. So it's 80 years of a person's life boiled down into 386 pages, right? Owned it, took notes on the cover, took notes on the first page, took notes on the second page, took notes in my notebook. Dave McClure was hosting a dinner called Startup to Startup, where he invites whale VIPs. And I crashed that dinner and went from crasher to VIP because Jessica was giving me a big shit test and I learned from a dude running, running, running dating protocols on my date. I'm at startup to startup and I say, Mr. Blank, Mr. Blank, will you sign my book? He opens my book, first page covered in notes, customer development, development cycle, uh, crossing the chasm, uh, feedback loops for, for how to get out of the building, uh, basically outlining his four steps. Uh, so he couldn't sign that page. So he had to flip to the next page tons of Sharpie notes. And he's like, where should I sign? Flips another page. He's like, I'll sign here. But while he's looking for a place to sign, he's looking at me like, who is this mother scratcher? Because this is the baddest mother scratcher I've ever met. That's how Steve Blank looked at me. And I went from wait list to VIP because Steve Blank's like, why don't you go ahead and just sit at the speaker table? I went from waitlist crasher, thank you, Dave McClure, to speaker table person who's asking questions. Did I ask a lot of questions with Bobby? Did I ask questions using my mute button? Yes, I did. I flashed my mute button to, uh, in applause, and then I often said, can you repeat that? Right? I was constantly doing that, but it was subtle. What were you saying? That's another good point. You actually are very valuable, uh, which is why a 2A keynote works great because I did not start off as a moderator. I started off as an administrative assistant named Yoshi as my alter ego, who's the person who's a great administrative assistant. So I was my own biatch. So if I'm my own biatch, I can be Bobby's biatch. And that's critical because I went from audience to speaker, speaker to question asker and listener, value added reminder to focus and listener, question asker, uh, understanding interpreter comprehender to then mo moderator. And that's Clubhouse. How to be magical in Clubhouse is also how to be magical in Silicon Valley because the, the, the Jessica Bang story matters because did you read a book after you left Clubhouse when a person told you to read a book. Because if you didn't read that book, you're now part of the people that not, they're just gonna be losers. I mean, those, it's not pulling back the curtain. It's just who can follow up and do, or are you just here to like be a, be a star fucker? Or do you wanna do a deal? Or do you want to, one time, I'm in this clubhouse room and the person was growing. And then this guy goes, this guy goes, you know what? I got it. We should be in a room together because if this were captured on video, it'd be magical. Cause I really want to be an actor.
Naked short sales. It's significant because Clubhouse, along with Reddit, along with people who take notes, are doing outsider trading. And outsider trading is significant because once you can read APIs, application protocol interfaces, once you can see the trade data, and then you can communicate in an educated way, that's also funny. That's what a meme is. A meme is a compression algorithm for knowledge. Let me repeat that. A meme is a compression algorithm for knowledge. In fact, because I am going to try to outlearn all y'all, if you tweet that back to me, I will, I won't actually follow you, but I will favor it and I will pay attention to you. A meme is actually a compression algorithm for understanding complex issues. If you tweet that back to me, I will see you as significant because we are all learning. And the reason that that's important is that's the first time that I've actually connected up a meme to a compression algorithm. Why? Because Elon Musk, he has all these memes and he also talks about compression algorithms. So I'm as a student and as a friend to Elon, I will be a student to him because I will tell Elon, hey, you know what? Your memes are just compression algorithms because if you Google the phrase and first principles, of course, Elon Musk and compression algorithms, that's why he's running a great stock market algorithm because he's got the compression algorithm for it. And also uh, baiting the shorts. A meme is just a compression algorithm. And that's what Clubhouse does, is it helps you pattern, rep pattern repetition and pattern iterate. So it allows you to pattern repeat and pattern iterate. Where you're on Clubhouse meeting cool people, instead of star fucking them, you can delegate to them the pattern recognition. I'm new to macroeconomic study, which is why the Weimar Republic is hyper, was hyperinflating in the 1920s, why Isaac Newton uh, had a stock market spike in the 1720s, and how in the 2020s, like, it's exactly the same history be repeats thing. So I'm kind of new to this. I'm kind of new to... If you're going to multitask, at least mute, right? I'm relatively new to this, so my notes are your guys' notes too. Do you guys also notice how many people on Clubhouse multitask versus single task? Because they kind of just use it to fill in the spaces because that's how they learn on a podcast. And do you see how when I turn on a podcast or when I open up a book, I focus on that. So when I'm on Clubhouse, I focus as if it's a live action podcast that I can ask questions. I wanna guess where it's going. I wanna know what was said. I want to write down notes and then recap. And that's another kind of clubhouse hack and a Silicon Valley hack and a life hack because focusing helps. Naked short sales finishing before I finish this room to let someone else take over because remember, it's top of the risk management morning. And this is a way to literally wash away any risk in your life. Naked short sales. A short, a lot of people don't understand what a short is. And it helps if you understand it to be a naked sale. And a naked sale is when a hedge fund or anybody sells shares that they do not own. So that's why you're a naked selling person. So you don't have the shares, but you're selling them. You are guessing that the stock will drop. Therefore you financially benefit. That's a naked sale. That's shorting a stock. 
the stock price goes up, you are fucked, okay? Fucked, fucked. Because then you have to sell shares that you don't own at a significantly higher price, which means that if the stock goes to the moon or to Mars or goes up, there is no limit to your losses. Wall Street Bets is a countermeasure to hedge funds constantly cheating the retail investor using financial engineering. Oh, have you heard of something similar to this? That's what Bitcoin solves is Bitcoin actually adds engineering back to money, whereas engineering engineering is real, whereas financial engineering, that's not real. You guys, great hanging out with you guys.